Hey, what's up guys? It's Cole and today I'm going to be reviewing every major language learning app that I'm aware of with brutal honesty. You probably won't agree with me and I'm definitely prematurely destroying some potential future sponsors by making this video so I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. It's great, let's just freaking do this thing. Duolingo. How else are we going to start this? What is there to say about Duolingo? Well, the first thing is they have the best system on the market for motivating you to learn your target language day after day. Why is that? Because even if you miss one day of Spanish lessons, say you went to visit your grandma or something, then Duo the Owl will personally track you down and beat the shit out of you with a baseball bat even if you're constipated, until you finish your promised daily lessons. Spanish or vanish, baby! They call him the king of kneecapping. Nah, but really though, the best thing about Duolingo is that it's free. It may not be the most efficient app out there, but it's definitely okay to sacrifice some efficiency for enjoyment, and boy is it fun. They also have like 30 different languages, and it really brought language learning to the masses. It's by far the biggest app on this list. They've also done a ton of work to help support endangered languages, like putting Navajo and Hawaiian on their system, and it's just really, really easy to use. So since it was almost single-handedly responsible for bringing language learning to the masses, and for all their work with endangered languages, Duolingo is easily an S tier. Rosetta Stone, oh my god. How do I put this delicately? Rosetta Stone is a piece of human feces. But I gotta give credit where credit is due. Rosetta Stone was one of the first language learning apps to ever come out like 100 years ago or something. But unfortunately, they haven't changed much since then. It, the whole system is very, very antiquated and it's absurdly expensive. The last time I used it was maybe five years ago when I was just getting into language learning and I didn't really realize how bad it was. They have five levels or so for each language the last time I checked, but they don't really equate to anything. They're just arbitrarily chosen and the vocabulary and grammar are quite random as well. Like, I think I learned how to say mask in Chinese before learning how to say you're welcome. There's also absolutely no reason as to why it's as expensive as it is. I think on the cheap end, it's like $80, and on the high end, it's like two or $300. And every time I see an ad for them, they're constantly running 10, 20, 30% off sales because they know that they can't get people to pay full price anymore. And for what it is, it's just not worth it at all, in my opinion. So honestly, mm. I would give it an E tier, but it did start off this self-taught language learning revolution that we're experiencing now, so I'm gonna be really generous and give it a D tier. Okay, Babbel, here we go. I don't have a lot of negative things to say about Babbel, I just think it's cool. The approach is really unique, they try to get you speaking a language as soon as possible by giving you all the vocabulary you'll need for really common everyday conversations, and then they kind of build you up from there. I haven't actually paid for the full version, so I can't give a thorough in-depth review on Babbel, but I did do the couple free lessons that they do have, and I gotta say that it was quite fun and engaging. They did go their own way, which I really respect, but I don't feel like I can give it an S or an A because I just don't know that much about it. But from what I did see, it was quite good and worth trying out, so I'm gonna put it in the B tier. Okay, Mondly. If you're anything like I was yesterday, you may be asking yourself, Cole. What the f is Monly? Monly is like that cousin that you meet at a family reunion that you never know you had that for some reason has a lot of freaking money. You don't know how they got it, but they're just there, so you thought you might as well talk to them. They claim to have over 70 million subscribers, which is just absolutely absurd. But anyway, the whole system is very bland. They kind of take some features of Duolingo, some features of Babbel, and just kind of throw them together. And everything is behind a super expensive paywall. You only get like one, one to two minute lesson before they ask you to pay to unlock everything else. So while I can't give my full opinion on it because I absolutely did not pay for it, what I did see in the free lesson wasn't anything special that you can't do with Duolingo. So I'm going to put it in pretty much anything is better than Rosetta Stone. So it gets a C tier. Busu. Okay. Busu is very interesting. It seems to have just sprung out of nowhere this past year because it seems like everybody is talking about Busu, but I'd never heard of it before this year. What really makes it stand out is that they give you this personalized study plan after they ask you a few questions about your goals and whatnot, which is pretty cool. I haven't seen any other app do that. And they also put emphasis on all four skills, reading, listening, writing, and speaking. They also have a flashcard system with images, which I like, but just like Monly, everything is kind of behind a big paywall. 
They also have some Duolingo-y type multiple choice questions that they throw at you every once in a while, which are cool, but again, nothing really special. And I don't feel like I can give it anything above a B just because I don't know what it's fully capable of because it just shares a lot of features with other apps. So I'm just going to put it in the same tier as Babbel. Okay, Anki. Anki isn't really a language learning app, but I thought I'd put it in here because almost everybody in the language learning community uses Anki in some form or another, because it's known to be one of the most powerful SRS spaced repetition systems out there. If you're going to use it for language learning purposes, it can take a while to set up, but there are also all of these pre-made decks with a bunch of the most commonly studied languages like Chinese, Japanese, Italian, etc. that you can download for free that I've gotten actually a lot of practical usage out of. And it has a lot of creative potential for what you do with it. It's just so flexible. So this is, for me, an easy A tier. Okay, italki. Italki used to be the king of conversation exchange apps before it went down the shitter. Because before they used to have this feature where you could find a conversation partner for free, but they seem to have taken that away back in like October or November. So now you just have to pay for tutors, which are pretty cheap to be fair, but it's also really easy to find conversation partners for free elsewhere. So eh. you're kind of paying for the convenience and you know, at the end of the day, you're going to do you. But for me, it's just not something that I would pay for especially when you can go into the description and join the Colang's Discord to find people to speak with there for free. <laughs> C tier. Fluent Forever. Okay, first of all, full disclosure, I'm a Fluent Forever affiliate, which means that if you click on the link in the description, you'll get two free months of the service and I'll receive $5. But the only reason why I agreed to do that was because I genuinely like the product. It's for people that really like flashcards. It's an SRS just like Anki, but it's much easier to add things like images and sounds to all of your words and sentences. They also add this whole other section where they explain all the phonetics to you using the International Phonetic Alphabet, which I think is really useful, especially in the beginning. But I've been using it myself to brush up on my German. It's really useful and I can't really give it an S tier because I'm affiliated with them. So I'm going to give it an A tier, but the deal where you can get two months free in the description, that is an S tier deal. Just saying. All right. Memrise. Hmm. How do I say this? Um. I got a lot of good use out of Memrise before I figured out that there are just a lot of better options out there. Mostly because they charge a hefty fee for just another glorified flashcard app. They have some cute little animations and things that make it more engaging, but really there are freer options that are just better. They don't do anything incredibly special and yeah, it's just pretty bland in my opinion. I'm gonna have to give it a C tier. Alright, next we have Pimsleur. Pimsleur is like that old guy that you befriended next door when you were a kid that gave you a lot of wisdom growing up, but you never really knew what he did during his whole life. Pimsleur is as old as the day is long, guys. This has been in use for over 100 years, I believe, at this point. It's trained people in the American FBI, in MI6, I want to say, diplomats all over the world, people in the military, like it's been around. But where it really shines is when you want to learn languages on the go. They separate all their lessons into 30 minute blocks that you can listen to on your phone without actually having to engage with your phone at all. And they really just explain everything to you in a very concise way, albeit very slowly, that can seem kind of monotonous at times. But you do get exposed to a lot of good information that you may not would have figured out yourself while studying the language with another app. If you're really busy in your daily life, say you're working like 12 hours a day in a job and then you go back home to your family so you only have time to learn languages on the go, Pinsler would definitely be for you and the method, I will say, is pretty solid. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, S tier, just for the amount of languages they have. Okay, Netflix, then you may be asking, why the hell is Netflix on this list? Well, while Netflix isn't really a language learning app or platform, they do have this Chrome Firefox extension called Learning Languages with Netflix or something like that, which transcribes whatever you're watching into one or two sets of subtitles that you can then click on the words and translate them while you're watching it. It's pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. It's a really lax way to learn a language, so definitely something that I support. It's free, which I love, excluding the cost of Netflix itself. But Netflix doesn't really have a huge selection when it comes to things in foreign languages, especially if you're learning a language that's less commonly learned. But for those of you that are learning like Spanish, French, Italian, you know, Chinese, something like that, it could be a really useful thing to add to your arsenal. So I'm going to put it in the B tier. Hello talk. Okay, I just 
I kind of wanted to draw attention to Hello Talk because I think it's really underrated. It's an app that's designed to match you with a conversation partner, usually someone who's trying to learn your native language and who is a native speaker of your target language. You can either text each other or call each other or set something up. It's free as far as I know. And I know a lot of people in the comments were saying that they were having a really hard time finding people to practice with. So I just want to let you know that this is a decent free option for those of you that are looking to do that. There's really nothing major wrong with it. So I think it is deserving of an A tier. Okay, Close Master, another language learning app that's very not that well known, I would say. And that's because there isn't anything super insane about this app. It's just a really gamified mobile version of Duolingo. And yes, I know Duolingo is mobile, but this thing was meant to be mobile. Like you can pull out the Close Master app and finish a lesson in like 30 seconds. It's super quick and easy to use. But it's questionable how much you'll learn over time, but it's good when you just have that dead time, like you're waiting for your car to be fixed in the mechanic or something, you pull out your phone for no reason. That may be a productive time to get some language practice in, if you're going to it anyway, you lazy bastard. They also have a pro version, but it's not stuffed down your throat like it is with Monli and Busu. So I'll give it a B tier. Okay, Link. Full disclosure, Link is one of my favorite resources to use. Mostly because of how powerful it is. You can go from being a complete beginner in a language to having a really advanced level of comprehension just with this resource. Which I can't really say for any other app on this list. It keeps track of all the words that you know. There's a forum, you can practice your writing and speaking with people. It's really just an all around good resource to use. But the thing is, is that it costs money. Personally, I pay for it because I think it's worth it and you get access to like 30 something languages with one subscription subscription. The one caveat with Link though is that I find it really difficult to use and I wouldn't recommend it for beginners because the UI is really clunky and sometimes it can be difficult to find what you're looking for, which is a real shame because it really is a good resource. If Link's UI was as easy to use as say Duolingo's or Babbel's, then it would be an easy S tier, but since it isn't, it's going to have to go in the A tier. <laughs> I forgot about this one. Google Translate. <laughs> Let's be honest, this is really how we're all learning languages. Easy S. 